FPS battle horde game in Unity and welcome to episode 6. So this tutorial we are going to bring in our weapon and we're also going to take a look at animating it. So we'll be dealing with some animation frames and I'll be going through that step by step. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else about game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, for all intents and purposes, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring in just a handgun for now. Um, and obviously, the mechanics that we end up creating for this handgun can be taken and applied to pretty much any weapon at all. So, in order to get this flowing nicely, we're going to bring in the weapon. Obviously, the weapon is just going to be a standalone object. So, on our screen, we're going to have a gun. Uh, showing and uh, yeah so we have to create the animations ourselves, but it's not too difficult and we learn some stuff along the way so let's create a folder for any objects that we would bring in so in our asset window let's right click create and let's go to folder and let's call it just objects and I guess you can classify them if you want to so in objects let's say another folder and just call it weapons and in here, I'm going to drag and drop this gun, which you can get on the website. It's in the description below. Head over there, go to Downloads and Assets, and go to tutorial number six in the FPS uh, Battle Horde series. And you can download it. Uh, if you get anything, any errors in the console, you can just go in and clear them because they're not strictly errors per se. They don't prevent the game from running. It's just saying it can't find a file, but don't worry about that because we don't need that file that it can't find. So how do we get this gun into our scene? Well, much like we have done with a couple of things, we can drag and drop. So to get this just right, let's go to the gun folder and let's take this M9 and place it inside our FPS controller. We will do a little bit more manipulation, but for now, let's just get it in our scene. It does look rather large, as we can see. So let's reduce the scale down so it's kind of a bit more representative of our character. So if we go to game, for example, you can see it's pretty big. That just looks silly. So let's have it at 0.2 by 0.2 by 0.2. That's the scale right there. And it is still a bit too big, as we can see. So let's go a little bit further bit of trial and error it's all it takes and now let's see how that looks we can't see it so that would imply to me that it probably is just about right maybe a little bit big but we'll see how it pans out so let's move the weapon into place where we would expect to see it so if we move it to about there and then go to our game view we can see yep that's okay but this is where splitting the game view would come in rather handy so let's take that game tab split it out and place it here and side by side we can see we have the scene view where we can move things and we have the game view so we can see what it actually looks like when our character holds it so let's reduce the size again 0 0.08 maybe 0 0.08 and 0 0.08 so we just need to kind of bring it out a little bit maybe lift it up a touch and what I'm also going to do is, well, I, I'm going to do it, but you don't have to. You could have it slap bang in the middle if you wanted to, but I'm going to have it slightly at a side. And I'm going to rotate it ever so slightly so as it kind of faces towards the center. Like so. And again, it's, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Now, you'll probably notice that there is no hand holding this gun. Um, if you want a hand, you would have to source your own model. Just keep in mind, though, if you want a hand uh, in your scene holding the gun, sometimes you may have to pay for such models. So to get a hand in the scene, you're going to need an extra model or a model that has a hand with the gun. Like I say, you may have to pay for that. As we do everything free here, we're going to stick with this. So once you have the gun in position, uh, if you press play, you will notice something a little strange, but we'll resolve that in a second. So I'm just going to recouple my game tab back up here so we can see it in full view. So I'm going to press play and everything should start fairly normal as long as Unity decides to wake up. So there's our gun. All great. However, if we do this, gun disappears. If we do this, gun 
is floating. Why does that happen? It happens because it's attached to the FPS controller and not the first person character. Remember, the character is ultimately the camera. That's why we have the camera preview there. So everything is rendered through here. So that means that we have to attach our gun to the first person character, not the first person controller. That then means that when we press play, we're able to see the gun normally. And yes, I know it glitches through the floor. Don't worry, that will happen, but it's something that we will uh, resolve later on in the series because we're going to deal with something called layers at a later point. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull my FPS controller up, or rather the first person character, up a little bit because I don't want them to seem like a bit of a dwarf. And like I say, with the gun, I think it's mostly all about how you want the gun to appear yourself. You know, you play around with the scale, the settings, the location, everything you normally would. Uh, if you want to, you can even play around with the materials themselves, as long as you um, take them out and just, you know, expand them, play around with them. Change it completely black if you want to. I guess it's entirely up to you. And the reason why that is just because of the lighting, that's all. It'll fix itself. You may have seen um, problems like that before. I wouldn't worry about it too much at all. Okay, so, like I say, feel free to play around with the weapon if you want to. Um, you can go that little step further and hold control, press D on the texture and add a normal map if you want to. So all we would do there is basically take it, change it to normal map, click apply, and then add that normal map to each um, part that would require it. So over there, we have everything selected there, and we've just taken it and dragged it over. And obviously you could have it as grayscale if you want to. It just depends, again, how you want your gun to look. So where do we go from here? Well, next thing we need to kind of work on, I guess, is basically how are we going to animate this gun? All I'm doing here is just changing a couple of things in the uh, material. Again, it's all down to your customization, how you want it to appear. So how do we get this being more like a gun and firing as you would hopefully expect to see? Well, we need something called the animation tab. To get that, if you don't have it already, uh, usually it's down here by default, you can go to this little menu button here. And if you go down, you'll see add tab and just click on animation. And that will present this window here. And you can see a time frame at the top and a couple of little buttons grayed out. You can't actually do anything with it right now, but we're gonna change all that. So let's go back to our assets folder, right click, create a folder, and let's have animations. And in there, once again, let's create a new folder and let's just have this as weapons. And in here, make sure you are in this folder, have your M9 selected, go to your animation tab and you'll notice this create button has appeared. So let's click on create. You'll be prompted to create a, um, a name. So let's call it, what can we call it? Pistol fire. Click save and then you'll be presented with this timeline where you can actually click and do things. So click on the record button right there. Now the first thing you'll need to do is ensure that you're set at 60 in the samples. That's 60 frames a second. We're going to be dealing at 60 frames a second because it makes things so much easier and your frame is set to zero. It doesn't have a key to tell you what frame this is. It just says zero. Frame zero is your keyframe, your very first instance of a frame. This is always the starting position of whatever object you are animating. Best way that you can deal with this is to basically take every number that is in your position and rotation and retype it. So in this case, our position is 0 0.57. And you'll notice these little things appear here. That is setting that frame. So that means at this very first frame, the weapon will be right here. 
And you'll notice these turn red up here. That means that they are affected by the frame. Now, just for completeness, well, let's retype everything we have here. So minus 1.21 and 2.69. We need to do the same with a rotation because we are going to deal a little bit with rotation, but we do need to make sure that rotation for X and Z is set to zero. So what you may need to do is type one and retype zero. That ensures that that keyframe registers zero on the rotation for X. And the same again for Z. And if you've done the same as me with Y, just retype whatever number you have here. If not, if you've kept it as zero, just do the same as what you've done for X and Z. Just make sure that everything is as you would expect it to be. So we've set that first keyframe of how our weapon should be. So how does a weapon fire? Well, it fires quickly in a split second, and then we can bring it back a little bit slower. So it kind of recoils a little bit as well. So we have to build that into the animation itself. So we're going to create a quick animation, then probably modify it. Now, remember, we're on 60 frames a second. That means that 60 frames is a second. So 30 frames is half a second. 15 frames is a quarter of a second. So we want a split decision for the gun to fire. So let's say by frame five and hit return, we want our gun to be um, up. So we fired upwards like so. And we have brought it back and down a little. So probably X up a little bit more. So we fired and now we need to slowly bring it back to normal. So our firing is going to be over the course of probably 15 frames, maybe a little bit more depending. So let's go to our 15th frame. And all we need to do is reset everything to how it was. So let's just basically copy everything back over. So if we go to our first frame right there, over here in transform, click on the little icon there, the cog, and you can see copy component. So copy, then let's go back to our 15th frame and let's go here and let's go down to paste component values. And what that will do is it will replicate that first frame. And as you can see, it's gone back to normal. So let's press the record button. The record button now stops the animation and says, oh, well, that's complete. Now, this is going to look a little bit crazy when we press play, but we should get um, basically a quick view of how the animation looks. There we go. So if we were to basically play the animation, that is how it would look. So let's refine this a little bit more. Let's do a bit of uh, refinement. So the timing looks relatively OK, but let's say we want our gun to really recoil. So let's go back to the animation tab and click on record. Let's go to frame five where the action has all taken place and let's bring it down a little bit more and recoil upwards even more. And let's press record again to stop that animation and then press play. And we should be able to see that extra. There we go. So it does look crazy, but if you can imagine that happening just once, you would see the point. So let's go to our animation right there, pistol fire, and untick loop time. The reason I untick loop time is I don't want the animation to loop. I only want it to play once. So if we press play, it's already happened by the time we've actually seen anything. But what we can do is let's say it's a big, I don't know, a magnum or something, you fire it and it takes a bit of time to come back. So what we could do, for example, is press record again on the animation and we could take this uh, keyframe 15 and move it to keyframe, what would that be, 40 right there. So you'll see it fire and come back a little bit slower than what it did before. So that's something you can work with. It's up to you how you want your animation to appear, how well animated you want it to be. But generally, you'll be able to see that most of the time you're working with, um, well, 
you're working with frames in this case there are other ways to animate and don't get me wrong there are better ways there are worse ways i always feel like using animation in this sense gives you quick and easy control of what you're doing so Overall, a lot of things do get animated in Unity, and this is just one of the basic ways that we would animate, in this case, a gun. There's much more to add to all of this, but it would require C-sharp coding. Speaking of which, that is what we're going to do in the next tutorial. We're going to bring in um, a sound as well, a gunshot sound, and we're going to start coding in C-sharp. So we'll be able to actually, let's say, left-click and fire our weapon. So, until that next tutorial, guys, you get your animation just right, you get the weapon how you want it to look in the right place, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.